Good morning guys, so I am uh, about to leave for the day tour. I have to check out because uh, I'll be a full day. When I come back, I'll just have to pick my luggage and head to the train station. So that's the whole reason why I have to do, just have everything ready. Uh, packed and I'll le uh, leave it down there where the, the storage area, the great Boris <laughs> had uh, was already organized for me to be able to pick up a packed breakfast so that I don't have to get late trying to get to the bus station where the day tour starts. So let's see how it goes. Morning, how are you? Is the breakfast ready? Yes, yeah. Two to one. I will have lunch Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so, I've given you the key. Yeah. I need to leave my bags. Yeah, I'm bringing you three on the other side. It's minus one. So, I need to put my gloves on. I don't want to die in this cold. So that's my packed breakfast from my friend Boris. So I was worried, I was worried I was going to miss this thing. As I showed you on my phone, it's uh, now uh, minus one degrees, but it feels like I don't know, very, very cold. It feels deeper than that. Yeah, so we'll see how. Wait for the bus, I was a bit worried I was on the wrong bus stop, so call the guys, uh, at least they've not started the tour, I'm here on time, I have my breakfast. It's too cold to even chuck it and eat it. <laughs> so it's even less so it's really fluid uh, the, the traffic but even on other days it's uh, really nice so you are leaving tonight what hour are you leaving at uh, you have a bus or something 11 ah, okay because yeah. we will be back at about 6 30 to 7 o'clock okay so it shouldn't be a problem here should be another person, I think that girl, yeah. That's the one. She seems like she might be from China. Uh, <laughs> by the name, I would say more like from Japan. We left Ljubljana, uh, which is our capital. Slovenia, it is relatively small country, uh, only 20,000 square kilometers, and only 2 million people live in this uh, area. Ljubljana is the largest city, it has about 300,000. So it's a relatively small, uh, one of the smallest capital cities in Europe. Uh, we are part of Slavic language group, we are Slavs. So yeah. before the Slavs came here, this was Celtic area, Celtic tribes lived here. And then Romans in the first century, they occupied this territory. And they also uh, founded the city in the, ter in the location of today's Ljubljana. It was called Emona in that time. I mean, look, I, I came from Austria into Slovenia and there was, you could not tell a big difference. No, that's the reason. Yeah, you are right. And that is a good, uh, good observation because usually I also say that uh, for, the, for 800 years, like I said, from 11th century until the end of First World War, we were part of the same empire like Vienna. Yeah. And Vienna actually was the capital of Slovenia. Yeah. Here, for many centuries, official language, at least in the cities or in the administration, was German. Yeah. Only in the countryside villages, 
uh, peasants, they would live uh, uh, and they would speak Slo in Slovene language. Otherwise, it was official language, it was German. Also, we didn't have our own university until uh, the end of the First World War. Only after the Habsburg monarchy was uh, dissolved, we could establish our own university. So, all of our like uh, intelligent uh, people, uh, I don't know, architects, writers, lawyers, everybody needed to go to school, to Germany, uh, to Vienna, to Prague, to other cities. So that's why also the architectural um, style here is the same as it is in German, in Austrian cities. That's why the, uh, the, the old part of Ljubljana is very similar to uh, to Austrian cities. Later today, when we go to Plaid, for example, you will see also the architecture there is very similar to Alpine architecture in Austrian villages and cities. So, yeah, that uh, that reason is very. I mean, that connection is very very close. I would even say that we, as Slovenes, we are Slavs, same like Croatians, Serbians, Macedonians, all the nations of ex Yugoslavia. But we have more in common with Austrians and Germans than we have with other Slavs. Apart from the language, we have our like mentality, our lifestyle, our music, our cuisine. It is all very connected with not, we can say Germans or we can say Central Europe or Alpine territory. So yeah, you are correct. now in uh, Kenya it's have summertime uh, long or well as far as uh, Europe is concerned yes <laughs> it's yeah, summertime uh, but now it's a bit warm it's very hot right now uh, maybe around 27 30 then around June normally it drops but around 10 12 that's, oh. the, that's the least it gets to so Nairobi is uh, like high or uh, well yes it's it's, it's higher but not that high. We have higher places, you know. Yeah. But still, we are because we are on, on the right on the equator. Yeah, you don't get it, like uh, winter we time. We don't get, yeah, we don't get that crazy. There is no snow in Kenya. Uh, only on the mountain. We have the second largest mountain in Africa. Mount Kenya, right? Yeah, Mount Kenya. Kenya. Yeah. So Mount Kenya. Only up there is where you can probably find snow. special uh, importance to our uh, economy or anything else. Mainly it's known because of the Cape, because Postojna Cape is one of the most visited places in Slovenia, if not the most visited place. Because uh, on average in one year about one million people visit the Cape. tickets and then at 10 o'clock is the visit to the cave because the visits are scheduled so okay. you you okay. have to go at our it's not like open cave that you can just go inside but it's all always guided tours okay. um, so how does it look like the first of all Today it's quite cold outside, but it's actually when you go to the cave, it's going to be warmer inside of okay. the cave because the cave has constant temperature throughout the year, summertime, winter time, doesn't matter, about 12 degrees. Okay. It is a little bit humid, but still it's going to be, today as it's quite cold, uh, it's going to be, the feeling will be much warmer inside. So, 
the visit, the whole visit takes about one hour thirty to one hour forty minutes. Depends on uh, how many crowds there will be. Now it's not so crowded. It's low season, so I think about one hour and a half to one hour forty it should be finished. Uh, the visit itself. It's made up of three parts, so to say. The first part, going into the cave by electric train, about two kilometers inside of the cave, it will be the right. Underground animal 
that lives anywhere in the world. So it lives inside of caves. It's about 30 centimeters long. Uh, looks like a, uh, like a lizard, okay. but it's actually bio biologically at least uh, a more uh, amphibious animal. Okay. Even though this one, through evolution, has adapted to life in, inside of caves, so it only lives uh, in the rivers. And that's why also we have three different names for this animal. First, Proteus, which is scientific name, yeah. that is uh, Latin. Yeah. And then the other one, like I said, human fish. That's why, because when it was discovered, and, uh, it was discovered in the, in the cave, uh, in the river. So they thought that it's fish because it lives in the river. That was more than 200 years ago. It has pale skin like uh, humans, like uh, white pale skin, so that's why it was called human fish. And that third name, then it's also baby dragon, because okay. here in Ljubljana or in Slovenia we have lots of legends yes. about dragons, yeah. the symbol of the city is dragon and so on. And all the legends say that dragons live in caves underground, and so when they discovered this animal, it was like small but similar shape like dragon. So they thought it's baby, <laughs> that are babies of dragons. Of okay. course, it's yeah. not true. <laughs> what we have in the eastern part, southeastern part of of Slovenia, there's also one cave where they discovered black human fish. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, but that one is only in one cave. It's, uh, the cave is not so interesting, but the animal actually is even more interesting because it's uh, the, uh, the human fish, this one that you will see in Postona, can be found in some other caves in Slovenia and also Croatia. Okay. While that one, the black one, it's only in one cave. Never, nowhere else in the world they discovered it. So it's really a rare species. The third part, going out of the cave again by train, another two kilometers. So inside of the cave you make like a circle, circular route of more or less six kilometers. That's not the whole cave, because the whole cave is actually 24 kilometers, the whole cave system of Postojna cave. Uh, it is the largest in Slovenia. It is uh, one of the most beautiful caves in the world due to its uh, richness with uh, stalagmites, stalactites, the proteus animal and so on. So it's a really, really very nice. Then the second to visit is the Predjama Castle, which is a uh, medieval fortification, okay. about 800 years old. Predjama means in Slovene language, in front of the cave. And that actually also symbolizes the location of the castle because it is in front of the cave. It's in a sheer rock, the castle built uh, into the rock, leaning on the rock. And when we will go inside, so we will walk through the castle, see the exhibition, a little bit about medieval lifetime, also a little bit about how people who uh, build the castle did do some uh, clever engineering, how to supply with water and so on. So, um, and then we will also go into the cave that is behind, only for a short part, but still we will do that video. Have nothing to do with 
nowadays people if you living here because Slovenians as a na as a tribe moved here in about seventh century after Christ. So first century was the occupation of uh, of Romans. Roman Empire existed here until second half of fifth century when it was destroyed uh, by the barbaric tribes. And then this area for a couple of centuries it's not even clear what was happening. Probably uh, many of different tribes from the east were passing through here like Franks, Germans, Goths, and so others. And then later in the 7th century came Slavs and they settled in this area. In that time they were not even called Slovenians, it was just one of the tribes that lived here and then the name Slovenians actually is in use for the last 300 years more or less. the middle of this uh, strange type of uh, monument. It's dedicated to a musical family, Ausenik, who live here nearby. And the, you see here is a, like accordion. This lake, by formation, is glacier lake because here in the during the last ice age was a huge lake a huge glacier about one kilometer uh, thick so when it was uh, when it was melted uh, it left a basin behind it and now we have this beautiful lake we are in lead Go to that part over there, that island. Beautiful, beautiful place in Slovenia. Underrated, really underrated.
not a lot of homeless people but because the social care social system tries to give all people opportunity or they have shelters where they can stay or they have these kind of social uh, places where they can go they get some social help so that uh, we try to take care of all people those unlucky as well so uh, of course there are poor people I mean you know average salary here in Slovenia is about 1200 euros per month uh, but we have also free uh, like education system, free healthcare. Uh, we try to get uh, people equal rights. So um, yeah, on the streets, it's not a lot of homeless people, not a lot of poor. have material uh, options you can still get opportunity to study and that's good I mean that I, I find this very very yes. good that uh, it's not privileged to be student or something that it's actually offered to you know, pretty much everyone. on this territory belonged to the uh, dynasty called Habsburg dynasty which is a famous uh, noble aristocratic uh, family dynasty that were emperors of uh, this territory uh, capital was in Vienna uh, they, they included also parts of Czech, Czech Republic Slovakia Hungary Croatia so it was one of the largest empires in the whole uh, middle or central Europe. <laughs> then this uh, kingdom or empire was destroyed or was de dissolved after Second World uh, First World War. Sorry. So last year we celebrated 100th anniversary of the end of the First World War, and after that in this territory, where new countries were established, uh, because the empire lost the war, they were in. With war with Russians, Serbians, Italians, and they lost the war. So, as a punishment, the empire needed to be dissolved into new countries. Slovenia, for that reason, together with Croatia, they merged with the Kingdom of Serbia into a new country that was called Kingdom of Serbians, Croatians, and Slovenians, which was later renamed into Kingdom of Yugoslavia. We are now talking in, for the time between First and Second World War. Then came the Second World War, which was the time of uh, Hitler, of Nazi regime. Yeah. And then Yugoslavia was occupied by, by Hitler. And later on, during the Second World War, in the 44-45, liberated by partisans, which were communists. And that's why then after war, Yugoslavia was changed into Socialist Federative Republic, which means uh, communist regime would take over by the leadership of Tito, the dictator. Uh, and then until 1991, Slovenian territory was part of that uh, socialist country. And then in 1991, we got independent, we declared independence as the first country of the ex-Yugoslavia. And uh, we didn't even have much war because uh, luckily we could ex escape the fights that happened later on in Croatia and Bosnia and so for the last 28 years almost uh, we are now on the independent route doing relatively well I would say
standing for the 2018 and Slovenia was in the top five yeah. safest countries. So I've noticed. You can go around to in the daytime, nighttime, uh, and nothing will happen to you. So. We are about to get to the next train station. The next train station is. Uh, it's called Milak. Milak is where I will do a connection to take the train to Vienna. So it's the next station. I should be there by 1.31 a.m. The train leaves at 1.50 a.m. Then I get to Vienna in another seven hours. Slovenia was highly, highly didn't disappoint. Uh, actually, it was. I think it is very underrated. It has very nice places you can go. If you saw the cave, the castles on the hill, the castle on the rock, castles everywhere. <laughs> I think I was to three castles when I was here. All on the hill with great views, stunning views, oh, especially the mountains. I think this is such an underrated place and uh, I would recommend to anyone who's serious uh, who really wants to experience a new, a different Europe. Not too different, but yeah, it has its parts. Uh, Slovenia is awesome.